reading him first. Reading is the real art form of insult. As a matter of fact, I think it's time you all came to a decision. We've been here almost three days, and apparently you people have nothing better to do than to sit around here hogging up the taxpayers' money, eating baskets of fried cheese, and staying at the Fair Price Motel, which I understand some of you think is one of the nicest places you've been in a while. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. It is not the nicest place I have been in a while. And for your further information, I am having dinner with a former president and first lady of the United States tonight because we are all going to be out of here. And the reason we're all going to be out of here is that this case is very simple. Did any of you listen to the judge's instructions? They told us to acquit. The case is frivolous. The defendant was not negligent. Case closed. QED. Over and out. <laughs> and mark your ballots. And if you don't mark them right, I'm going to rip that fire extinguisher off the wall and blow your overfed, underread, simple-minded butts out onto the Fair Price Motel parking lot. <laughs> I don't think jury members are supposed to threaten each other. I don't appreciate that. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I don't appreciate your leaving your big old box of June Allison bladder pads on my nightstand. <laughs> of course, you don't care if you never get out of here. You don't even have to get up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> now, I am passing out these slips for the final ballot. And I want to tell you right now, read my lips. <laughs> Mark your slip wrong, and I will wrap it around a fried cheese ball and shove it down your throat. <laughs> now you want to talk about reading? Oh my God. Let's talk about reading. Oh God, you're so fast, There'd be an arch over your bed. <laughs> I don't mean that, bitchy. <laughs> you get in a smart crack and everyone laughs and yeah. kikis because you found a flaw and exaggerated it, then you've got a good read going. I don't know exactly what your problem is. I don't know if your medication is off or if your arterial flow has just completely stopped. <laughs> but I do want you to know this. When we go back on the air, if you do not correct this, I am going to personally pick you up and throw you across the room. <laughs> if it's happening between the gay world and the straight world, it's not really a read, it's more of an insult, a vicious slur fight. That is not for me to say, I just know that these people are getting what they deserve. I'm a gene, get serious. Who do you think you're talking to? I've known you for 27 years, and all I can say is, if God was giving out sexually transmitted diseases to people as a punishment for sinning, then you would be at the free clinic all the time. The reading became a developed form where it became shade. Shade is, I don't tell you you're ugly, but I don't have to tell you because you know you're ugly. the current Miss Georgia world. Why, well, yes, I am. I'm Julia Sugarbaker, Suzanne Sugarbaker's sister. I couldn't help overhearing part of your conversation. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't know anyone was here. Yes, and I gather from your comments there are a couple of other things you don't know, Marjorie. For example, you probably didn't know that Suzanne was the only contestant in Georgia pageant history to sweep every category except congeniality. And that is not something the women in my family aspire to That's anyway. <laughs> that when she walked down the runway in her swimsuit, five contestants quit on the spot. Or that when she emerged from the isolation room to answer the question, what would you do to prevent war? She spoke so eloquently of patriotism, battlefields, and diamond tiaras, grown men wept. That's really and you probably didn't know, Marjorie, that Suzanne was not just any Miss Georgia. She was the 
Miss Georgia. She didn't twirl just a baton. That baton was on fire. And when she threw that baton into the air, it flew higher, further, faster than any baton has ever flown before, hitting a transformer and showering the darkened arena with sparks. And when it finally did come down, Marjorie, my sister caught that baton, and 12,000 people jumped to their feet for 16 and one half minutes of uninterrupted thunderous ovation as flames illuminated her tear-stained face. And that, Marjorie, just so you will know, and your children will someday know, is the night the lights went out in Georgia. Helen Saturday. I'm sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> well, now you do. <laughs> oh, let's see.